Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we will be talking about how you can co-register your hyperspectral image data with a high resolution photo. In general, the goal of the co-registration is to establish a mathematical model that is able to match two images of different resolutions to each other. There are many methods to achieve this. One of the most reliable ones is based on the use of affine transformations. Affine transformations are linear transformations that allow you to shift, rotate, and scale an image. In order to find the parameters of a suitable affine transformation, ImageLab specifies reference points in both the hyperspectral image and the photo to be co-registered. Let's try this now using a data set of particulate matter sampled from ambient air. The sample was measured using energy dispersive x-ray imaging. The high resolution monochromic photo of the sample was obtained by a scanning electron microscope. To start, we first have to load the photo by clicking the button right of the attached photos field in the data description window. Now add the photo by clicking this button and selecting the photo. When the photo is attached to the image data, ImageLab creates a copy of the photo and gives it a unique name. Next, select the newly added photo and click Calibrate Photo. Maximize the Photo Matching Tool window so that it is more convenient to work with. By default, the Photo Matching Tool adds four reference points that are of course invalid. But having defined already four reference points makes it easier to find a crude initial setup. At the top of the tool, you have several buttons which let you manipulate the reference points. Here we have a button to move individual points, shift them all together, add an additional reference point, temporarily exclude a point, and delete a point. As a starting point, let's set the predefined four reference points to valid positions. For this purpose, we tried to find a layer where we can recognize at least some of the particles in both images. So for example, if we select layer four, which represents the chlorine signal, we see many particles whose pattern can be seen in the photo as well. We can recognize these three particles in the photo over here or this combined particle here. For a first rough calibration, we now shift the reference points to particles we believe to be the same in both photos. We shift point one in the hyperspectral image and in the photo to the corresponding particles. When we move the reference points, the calibration is adjusted automatically and the two images are plotted on top of each other in the window to the right. Now move points two through four as well. point three, and finally point four. We end up at a very crude calibration that we can check by repeatedly switching on and off the hyperspectral layer. At this point, it is a good idea to select a different color scale for the hyperspectral data to make it easier to recognize how the particles match up in the right window. For this purpose, double click the color scale. I normally use the color palette called bipolar. What we see is that the calibration is still poor if we look at the top right of the combined image. Thus, we add a new reference point in this area. In general, we should spread out the reference points across the entire image. This ensures an optimal fit. Of course, not all particles contain chlorine, so we should select another layer to find more corresponding particles. Let's do this for oxygen, as oxygen is a major constituent of silicates that we suspect to be part of this sample. Now we see the particles at the lower right are still not matched perfectly, so we add another reference point to this particle. In general, six or seven reference points are sufficient to create a good match. After having set up a crude initial calibration, 
we now proceed to do the fine tuning. For this purpose, we zoom into the image so that the individual particles are easier to recognize. Then we click each reference point in the list at the top right. This will show the surroundings of the selected reference point. And then we shift the reference points such that they are aligned in the best possible way. Sometimes it is better to shift a reference point to another neighboring particle. For example, if the particle is at the edge of the image. Finally, we zoom out to see the entire image and check if the co-registration meets our needs. If we are satisfied, we simply click the OK button and close the list of attached photos. Don't forget to save the data. I hope this video helps you to co-register hyperspectral images and photos. If you have any questions, please write an email to help at imagelab.at. Thank you for watching.